PETROS is an acronym of percutaneous transcatheter release of stuck mechanical valve. And this is my financial disclosure. In 2020, ACC AHA valve recommendation clearly said that obstructive prosthetic valve thrombosis has got two class 1B recommendation. One is surgery, another one is slow infusion of fibrinolysis. In 2022, a multi-center Hattusha study from Turkey group compared head-to-head -head between the surgery and the thrombolysis. If we see, out of 276 enrolled in the study, 20% of the population were unsuitable for fibrinolytic therapy. I think out of these contraindications, even we can add four or five other contraindications for thrombolysis. So clearly there is a group of population where there is no option of surgery, especially when the patient is on high risk for redo surgery. And in the Hattusha study, if you see the outcome, the success was defined as either Doppler documentation of resolution of hemodynamics or reduction in the thrombus size by echo. I don't know how sure we can measure the thrombus size through the echo and symptomatic improvement. There is no mention about the opening angles and closing angles. These were very important for the mechanical valve well function assessment. And the follow-up is only 90 days. Clearly, the slow infusion thrombolysis is better compared to surgery, but we do not know what, going to, what is going to happen over the long term. So definitely, there is a need for an alternative therapy. And the outcome definitely should include opening and closing angles. So when we are trying to understand the mechanism of stuck valve, this is the on first view of the valve, and this is the explanted bileaflet valve. Imagine that there, here is a single leaflet stuck. This, the inferior leaflet is normally opening, and this is stuck. The reason may be because of the thrombus attachment at the lateral orifice annulus, or it may be at the hinges. In a coplanar view, again, the thrombus may be on the LA side or on the LV side on the lateral orifice or at the hinges. So how to open this stuck leaflet? If you try to place a catheter in the left atrium and pass a wire into the LV, and this is a hinge, if you try to exert pressure over this hinge, this leaflet will move away. So basically, it's a mechanical force we are creating to dislodge this thrombus or dislodge this attachment. So I hope by inflating the balloon, the thrombus will dislodge. The moment we deflate the balloon, the valve may start functioning normally. But what are the questions unanswered? whether while doing a balloon dilatation, leaflet will dislodge ravels from the hinges, or it can produce fracture, or it can deform and affect the function of the leaflets, or the bond between the clot and leaflet may be so strong, it may not be able to release, and what is going to happen when the materials embolize into different parts. I think this embolism part, we can protect important cerebral circulation, and we can manage the other part of the vascular structures. The rest of the questions needs animal study or a bench model. And there is a clear lack of information about what is the ideal balloon size. For that, we should know what is the central orifice size and lateral orifice size in a bileaflet valve. So how to address? If we collect the bench test of, if you do the bench test of the brand new valves, it is not going to mimic the in vivo scenario because wear and tear at the core body temperature over several years is not going to uh, mimic the uh, stuck valves. Animal study, there are two models we can try. One is the swine model. The problem is a post-operative survival issue. And sheep model, the coagulation issue. And also it's costlier. So we thought that bench study of the explanted mechanical valves for some other reasons are including the stuck valve. During the redo surgery, we can test in a bench and we can study the safety of this balloon dilatation. This is one example of 28 millimeter ATS AP valve explanted after two years and four months of implantation. And in fact, we can see some of the material still attached to the hinges after explantation. So we measured the lateral orifice diameter through the vernier caliper, it was 10 millimeter. 
and the central orifice, we cannot pass the caliper through the central orifice, hence we measured, including the two leaflets, it was 6.49. So that uh, when we measure the leaflet thickness, we can derive the central orifice diameter. In this particular valve, the diameter was 4.7 millimeter. So here is a central orifice of 4.7, nearly 5 millimeter, and lateral orifice of 10 millimeter. When we do a 1 is to 1 balloon dilatation in a bench test at nominal pressure and at RBP, the valve leaflet did not bend and did not fracture, nothing happened. Then we gradually increase the size of the balloon, first in the central orifice from 5 millimeter to 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. While using a 10 millimeter Mustang balloon, at 12 atmosphere, one of the leaflet actually dislodged from the hinges. We can see the pyrolytic carbon is bending as we are going from the nominal slowly towards the RBP. At one point of time, one of the leaflet dislodged completely, but other leaflet, though it bent, it recoiled back to its normal position. And when we inflate a lateral orifice, remember it was a 10 millimeter size, we inflated 12, 14, and 16. During the 16 millimeter balloon inflation of Atlas Gold at 12 atmosphere, in fact, the leaflet fractured into multiple pieces. So these are all the fractured pieces of these leaflets. But there was no damage to the sewing ring or the hinges. So this is one example of a bench test. With this, I'm trying to present one clinical presentation of a 64-year-old gentleman, underwent a 29 millimeter St. Jude valve five years back, presented with acute pulmonary edema at some other hospital, where the patient was fibrinolyzed with streptokinase, one lakh unit per hour for 48 hours. Patient was little bit stabilized, but still persisting higher gradients and in heart failure, referred to our center. We did a cardiac CT, where we can see here in a stuck leaflet on the left atrial side, there was a thrombus attached. And this is the on first view. We can see completely the left atrial side of the leaflet is covered with the thrombus. Hounsfield unit says 130 units, mostly a organized clot. That is why it didn't respond to fibrinolysis. And this is the fluoroscopic view on the day of procedure. Clearly we can see in both on first view and coplanar view, the anterior leaflet is stuck. And in CT, we can measure the various orifices size. And in this particular case, it was 4.16 millimeter was the central orifice size. So these are all the three steps of Petra's procedure. Step one, we can pass a transept, we can take a transeptal puncture and place the Agilis catheter in the left atrium, exactly opposite to the central orifice. Step two, cerebral embolic protection. In majority of our cases, it was achieved by two spider filter in the internal carotid artery. Two cases, we used sentinel filters. Step three, we can do a balloon dilatation. Hence, the leaflet will open. And most likely, if it goes to the cerebral circulation, it will get protected. But it can go to the other circulation also. So with this concept, in this case, we took a transeptal axis at the posterior and inferior area, like a TMER case, and placed the agile sheath in the left atrium. Step two, two carotid filters, six millimeter filters, were implanted in the carotid arteries. And step three, balloon dilatation. We pass a BMW coronary wire through the central orifice, and we can notice the moment a five millimeter balloon. Remember it is a 4.2 millimeter orifice. So we use a five millimeter balloon and immediately it opened after that it's started functioning normally. Even in those cases where we could not do the CT, we can me measure the orifice size by means of doing a quantitative, quantitative analysis in the on first view in the fluoroscopy. And this is the final result. We can see the closing angle of 30 degree and the opening angle of 85 degrees at the end of the procedure which was the normal angles as suggested by the company. So with this uh, concept, we did uh, uh, various mechanical valves and successfully opened, we can see the onyx valve or even some of the tilting disc valve. We can see the chitra valves without any leaflets. 
and we can see here the Medtronic Hall valve. So almost I think we tried all of the tilting disc under bi valves. This procedure is going to be more safer with the availability of apoiotic total embolic protection devices. And we, are, we have started a stuck valve registry single center trial to compare the outcome of this procedure against the standard of care fibrinolysis and surgery. And these are all the various uh, embolic material we caught uh, using the spider filters during these cases. And uh, these are all the corresponding histopathological examination where we can see various stages of thrombus and even panis. So that's the story of Petras, how it is evolved from a simple concept to a reasonable science. The troubleshooting complications, short-term and uh, mid-term outcomes are available in these papers. Those who are interested, please go through and give us a valuable feedback. Thank you very much for your attention.